So in this video, um, what we're going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is previously we were given a graph. Can you move over here for me? Do you need to? OK. So previously, what we talked about was we took figures and we reflected them, right, over lines of symmetry. It could have been the x-axis, could have been the y-axis, could have been the x equals y-axis, or also could have been the origin. But we reflected them over certain lines of symmetry. OK, Camille. I, and so now what we're going to do is talk about translations. And you guys should be fairly familiar um, with the translation. A lot of times you guys might have been interpreted a translation as like the slide, right? You take a figure and you slide it left or right, correct? Something like that. So let's go ahead and talk about um, a figure and determine how we're going to do a, how we're going to do transformations and then how we actually write that, okay? So the first transformation I'd like to go over is how to just do a slide of a, poly, um, of a polygon. So let's do So if you were to draw this point, what you'd want to be able to do is write down these problems. And let's go and take a look at this figure. All right, let's see what this looks like. Now, remember, guys, when you're drawing these points, make sure you always label the points, OK? Mario goes on the top, top uh, bin right there on the left-hand side. So we do negative 2, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's A. We have 1. Comma 3, that's M. We have N, which is 4, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. And then we have P, which is 1, negative 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. OK, so that's my polygon. Jared, could you actually move over there? Because I, I just don't think you guys um, fit, fit very well together. So if we were, um, if I was going to graph this, right? And we could talk about reflections all day long. We already went through the reflections. So now, Dustin, what we're going to be talking about is how to move the figure. All right? Now, if I just want to take this exact same figure, and I just wanted to slide it to the right, what do you think would happen to the x coordinates? So let's say I wanted to slide it to the right. Four units. Elena, what do you think would happen to those x to the coordinates? Each of these coordinates. If I said I wanted to shift it five units, let's say five. Five units to the right, what would happen? What would I have to do to change these coordinates to represent a shifting five units to the right? I'll get you next. Add five to the x coordinate, right? Does that make sense? I'll say it again. If we needed to shift this graph five units to the right, we're going to add five units, or five, to the x coordinates. Now, Aiden, if I wanted to shift it five units to the left, what do you think we'd want to do? And that's exactly my point. So let's take those out, take both of them out. Exactly. So what, Aiden, I'm trying to explain to you is if you're trying to shift this graph five units to the right, you add five to the x coordinates. If you want to shift it five units to the left, you're going to subtract a five. Okay? So let's just go through and let's just say I say shift five units to the right. So if I shift five units to the right, all we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is say a prime is now going to be negative two plus five, comma four. M prime is now 1 plus 5, comma 3. N prime is 4 plus 5, comma 1. And P prime is 1 plus 5, comma negative 3. Do you guys see how that works? OK, Aiden, you should be writing this one down, writing these new points. Do you guys see how those new points work? All right. So now let's go and figure out what they are. A equals 3, comma 4. M prime 
m prime is 6 comma 3, n prime is 9 comma 1, and p prime is 6 comma negative 3. So ladies and gentlemen, if I'm, if I'm moving a graph horizontally, <laughs> if I'm shifting something horizontally, I'm going to want to add and subtract to the x coordinate of my points. And if I'm moving my graph to the right, I'm going to be adding a positive number. And if I'm going to move it to the left, I'm going to want to add a negative number. Yes, Jared? So it's pretty much the exact same thing for the y axis, right? Got it. So let's go and take a look at what this would look like. If I shifted this graph over five units to the right, a prime would be at 1, 2, 3, up 4. m prime would be at 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n prime would be at 9, comma 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1. And p prime would be at 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 3. So do you guys see how that works? Yes? OK. So now there's another thing, yes, I want, you, I want to go over with you, is what we're going to do now is sometimes we're not going to resonate. Sometimes we're just not always going to transfer it in one direction, left or right. We could also shift the graph up or down, right? So let's pretend we want to do shift two units down. All right, now I'll show you guys in just a second why I'm doing it this way. But for right now, just write this down so you guys have it. Dustin. Huh? Oh, did you write your summary? Yes. Oh, OK. Well, you could raise your hand. I would have gave it to you. I thought you were waiting for something else. So if I wanted to shift this down two units, all right, um, I'll do this again. Um, one thing we're going to do now is since we're shifting it down, so if we shifted it positive right, we moved it to the right, right? If we wanted to shift it left, we subtracted from the x. So if I want to shift down, I'm going to subtract 2 from which coordinate? The y coordinate. So I'm going to call this a double prime because I'm doing this transformation twice. So therefore, this would be 3 comma 4 minus or 4 plus a negative 2. All right. I know you might say, why don't you just subtract 2? I want to add a negative number, and I'll show you, and I'll explain why. 4 comma negative 2. m double prime is going to be 6, com or 6 comma 3 plus a negative 2. N double prime is going to be 9 comma 1 plus negative 2. And P double prime is going to be 6 comma negative 3 plus negative 2. Now, is adding a negative the same as subtracting? Is it? Adding a negative the same as subtracting? Yes, it is. Of course it is. Whoa, that was a bad line. It's really sloppy. Um, so the re I'll, I'll explain here why again in a second. But you guys can see A double prime is going to be 3 comma 2. M double prime is now 6 comma 1. N double prime is going to be 9 comma negative 1. And P double prime is going to be 6 comma negative 5. Now, you guys can go ahead and find all those points by using these transformations. But if I'm asking you to graph it and you don't need to find the points, you guys can also just go from, if you shift it right five units, is it OK for me just to take this point and go down two units yep. and say that's a prime? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah? Can I take this point and then just go down two units? I'll explain it more in a second. If I have n, can I just go down two units? n prime. And can I p, can I just go down two units? So do you guys see how now I take the red figure and I just shifted it down two? You can find the coordinates by subtracting this, or you can simply just shift it on there. But a lot of times, if you're trying to find the points, sometimes it's easier to do the algebra. Now, the reason why I did all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very rarely going to tell you to take the graph and shift it five units to the right and, three, and two units down. Very rarely am I going to say that's the directions. 
your directions are going to come in this format. A comma B. Okay. I'm going to say, hey, make the transformation according to that vector A comma B. And you're now looking at me like, OK, I was understanding it. But now, like, what is that all talking about? What A comma B, what that represents is the transformations, the vector that your transformation is going to follow. So if we look at this, what we do with A or B is we have e, every point has an x and a y coordinate, right? It doesn't matter if A or B is positive or negative. To find the transformation, you're going to want to write this down. You have x plus A comma y, or sorry, y, yes, plus B. So if you guys want to be able to determine the transformations, you add whatever the first number, whatever your first term is, that's what you add to the x coordinates. Whatever the second number is, that's what you add to the y coordinates. It doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive. So if it's a negative b, you add a negative b, which is the same as subtracting. And that's why I kind of wrote that negative add plus a negative 2. So you guys can get to the understanding. You always add, but it could be positive or it could be negative. Hold on one second, Com. Um, so we get to that point. So then you guys have it. So in this case, what is our vector? Well, we shifted five units to the right, and we shifted two units down. All right, so let's go and take a look at what does that vector look like then in reference to how my, trans how my graph was transformed. So if I follow this vector, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2. Would you guys say that this whole figure was transformed in the direction of that vector, that distance in that direction? Would you guys say that's kind of like the distance or direction my two transformations took me? Does that kind of make sense? This got shifted that. OK? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we really need to do as far as our transformation vector to go and apply that. All right? Yes? Oh, can't go back to class.